This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs The Playbook, and I'm here at the amazing SoFi Stadium, the greatest stadium ever built. And now I have one of the greatest social media influencers that I've met, the CEO of Zila. He is Ilya Fedorovich, and most people know him, man. He's all around, whether it's pizza or progress supplements. This guy's into it all. Welcome, Ilya. Thank you for having me. This is a, a really, really sick venue. I think this is the coolest uh, podcast venue I've been to. So, well, speaking of podcasts, you have your own podcast, but the Light Whites uh, yep. podcast, yep. and you have you know quite a few episodes going. We've been doing this a, a long time, and you know I have found it to be one of the best activities that I can have. I and, think it's like it's like meditation. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's I also think it's like the best learning. I call it an MBA in a day. And, yeah. you know, today is like eight MBAs because I've just been blessed with amazing guests like yourself. But I find it what a great opportunity that not only can I learn, but then we can capture it and teach so many people the spirit of excellence, the inside secrets, the niches and the riches that you've created. And when I say that, I really think of someone like you that is making his riches in the niches. And you really have built a brand from knowing yourself which is rare for the age that you are, what has given you the confidence to know your essence? Because all the content that I've seen of yours, th there's so much, I actually thought that I've seen you in person and I'm still not <laughs> yeah. positive, but I, yeah. I, I, sure I, it's like reverse, somewhere. it's like reverse. Yeah. You know, most people say, yeah, I know you. I'm like, nah, I'm not really sure, but yeah. you probably see me somewhere. It's but funny. for you, you know, I'm old. Like I should know who I am. You really seem to know who you are. Yeah, I, I mean, I think for the most part, I'm still trying to figure it out um, yeah. a little bit. But at the end of the day, I, I think I've, I have had a good grasp and realization on what I like to do and what my passions are. And I think at the end of the day, that's what makes you who you are. And who you are seems to be extremely positive. Um, and, you know, I have had a lot of different influencers on here. And if you notice in the intro, I called you an influencer and I've started to distinguish those two types of people. Uh, you know, someone like Ellie Zeiler, who I consider to be an influencer. She's not trying to create dis-ease. She's not trying to oversell and back end sell, lie, manipulate and, yeah. you know, brag and cheat standing in front of cars she doesn't own or houses that right. she's leasing. You seem to be the same type of person, an influencer. You're trying to create a flow. You're trying to allow people to empower and inspire them. You know, do you see a distinction between some of the younger social media stars that, you know, there's a school of influencers and also a school of influencers? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. I definitely think that there's people out there that um, kind of fake it till they make it or fake it till they don't. Or just keep faking it. Yeah, just keep faking <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to be honest with you, it's kind of like to each their own. Yeah. Um, you know, do I think that posing in front of cars that aren't your own or, you know, trying to flex on something that isn't necessarily yours is good. No, but like, you know, I, like I said, that's what they like to do and they think that that works for them. And I, I kind of think like, so be it. You know, I don't think that that works for me necessarily. I'd, I'd rather like show my true self or whatever. So, yeah. And on top of the influence that you have, you're a CEO of a business and you know, a successful business that helps people in the supplement space and health and wellness space. What got you involved initially uh, with that space? Yeah, so I've been going to the gym and working out ever since I could remember since I was, you know, 10, 11 years old. So I tell people that, you know what their response is? Really? <laughs> <laughs> you at least I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I, so I've been working out for a long time and I'd say about, Three years ago, I moved to uh, Los Angeles in 2020, so almost three years ago. Where where'd you come from? From Chicago. Yeah, right on. Yeah, so I, I lived there my entire life. Born in Belarus in Minsk, moved to Chicago, then moved to Los Angeles. And um, I was on the phone with my mom one day, and she knows how much I exercise and, and the supplements I take. It's all she hears about is like when I'm at dinner and I'm like, I can't have this, I can't have this, whatever. <laughs> She's like, oh, come on, whatever. So I'm talking to her about what I'm drinking. Um, the supplement that I'm taking. And she's like, well, do you know what kind of chemicals and toxins and heavy metals and whatever is in that? And, and 
typically kind of like brush off what your mom says and just move on. But in that moment, for whatever reason, I, I took into consideration what she said and I did my research online. And what I found out uh, about what she said was actually true is that most products, uh, most supplements that you're buying or taking in uh, do contain traces of heavy metal, of toxins, of banned substances. And so I kind of looked at it and I was like, okay, I train, I take supplements, I want to know what I'm putting into my body. So I'm going to create my own product, get it third party tested, and release it to my audience. And so that's what I did. It's amazing, because, you know, most people don't take that step. They'll, they'll find out about it and then they'll just go look for something that maybe satisfies the requirements or similar to what they want. What do you think it is about your mindset that said, OK, my mom's right. Fitness is extremely important to me. It's been a part of my life since I've been seven. Yeah. Uh, but to take a step and say, you know what, I'm going to create my own is a whole different animal. What do you think it is to have that type of initiative to be that interested to do that? Yeah, I that's a great question. I really what I, what it boils down to, in my opinion, is like it sounds kind of cheesy, but like I'm an entrepreneur at heart, you know, that's not cheesy to me, man. Look and, who you're talking to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just I see a problem and I, I see a way to capitalize on it. And I go, I want to solve that problem and I want to make myself happy and I want to make people happy while doing it. And so that's I think all the initiative you need is like just to to know how to fix a problem and to to want to better people, better people's lives with whatever you're doing. Yeah, it's funny. You know, I've been through 35 years of being an entrepreneur, people laughing at me, scoffing at me, making fun of me and yeah. then applauding me and then losing everything and doing it all over again. And yeah. here I am with probably one of the biggest offices in the world, at least uh, an office that has the most seats uh, in the world yeah. in the best uh, Best view v video <laughs> screen. I got a pretty good. We can play Xbox back there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. That'd be pretty cool. Right. Uh, but to that meaning, you know, a true entrepreneur sees two things. They find what people like and try to give them more of that. Yeah. Or they find what people don't like and try to solve that problem as yeah. well. And if you can do either or and then articulate the quantitative value of that, you'll probably do extremely well with that business. Behind every business is not only a great jockey or a great entrepreneur, but a lot of times the brand or the name uh, has to resonate to allow people to give it a chance. Even if you have, you know, the following that we have, it doesn't mean that it's going to be successful. As we found Absolutely. out in the space, you can't just throw someone's face on your product. Uh, you have to provide value one. Yeah. You also have to be branded correctly. And one of the things that I noticed as an entrepreneur about your brand Zila uh, is it resonates. It, did you spend a, a lot of time or the process or meaning behind figuring out your brand? Yeah, I did a, a lot, quite a bit, actually. Um, and one thing that's extremely important to me is connecting with people on uh, with their emotions. And I, I, I want to position Zila in a, in a way that people can, can go to us and relate, you know, relate in the sense of, I want to get in shape or this motivates me, or I'm again, connected to this brand somehow emotionally. Um, and it's difficult to do because you're trying to um you're trying to make you're trying to make the brand like the, its own thing while like like creating your own mission around it i don't know how to explain it but it's like yeah i definitely put in some some like time to like think about what what the brand positioning should be and i think that any brand that stands out and kind of like sticks with people are brands that have that unique positioning and there's a complexity to brands today that goes beyond Zila and that you've tied in your personal brand. And that's something that I've done for over three decades is build in the sports world, at least in the entertainment world, you know, different brands beyond the two sidelines that were out there. Some of the biggest sports and entertainment celebrities. Uh, but today those brands go beyond celebrities. They go beyond great athletes and entertainers. 
they now go to entrepreneurs, billionaires, and even millionaires that can create their own brand. And then each of those brands complement each other. How have you been able to leverage your personal brand, which is successful with building a separate brand? Is it separate to you or is it led by your personal or led by the company brand? So I think the goal is for it to be led by just the company brand. I want the brand itself to be bigger than me, you know, eventually. And um, obviously with having been blessed with a big amount of followers on Instagram and being known on, on the internet, I was able to say again, okay, I'm going to put this out to those people that follow me and give them what they need, what I think is good for them. So, and yeah. what was the response the first time, right? Obviously there's that initial, Hey, this is what I'm doing. And yeah. did it resonate with your audience the way you thought it would? Yeah. Much better than I thought actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with the launch of the brand, we did a documentary of my buddy's weight loss transformation. And I think people kind of went, okay, if he's able to do it and he's using these products, why can't I do it? I think that's where I made the connection. And which of the products is your favorite? The protein, the plant protein. Plant protein. Yeah, I, I'm not just saying this. And listen, like I'm up at this point, like a protein connoisseur. So I've tried everything. Um, I think that I have one of the leanest, one of the cleanest, and one of the best tasting plant proteins on the market. And even though like it's a biased opinion, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. also unbiased because I know what's out there, you know, and I know what people don't like and I know what people like. And for the most part, the things that people don't like, I don't have in my product. It's amazing. Now there's different types of distribution and, you know, I've mentored many different entrepreneurs and understanding how to leverage a personal brand and have a direct to consumer uh, distribution but a product like yours has multiple streams uh, that they can be distributed in. And one of the more challenging ones is the retail side. Yeah. Uh, do you have, you know, a plan for how to address the retail side of things? And if not, are you going to stick to a direct model? I think I want to go retail um, eventually. And at the forefront of it, it's for credibility's sake. It's to say, Hey, Zila is in GNC right. or Zila is in vitamin shop. I think that will give us some sort of like, okay, cool. So these guys, even though I've known they're kind of legit, now they're like legit because now they're backed by a store. Now, when it comes to profit, profitability and whether or not going to go in a, a retail store makes me money. Not necessarily, not directly, at least, you know, you have to sell to them at wholesale, you get paid net 30, net 60. So it's like, whatever, you know, I'd rather pay full, I'd rather have someone pay full price direct to consumer. And they're obviously coming to me directly as a brand versus going to a vitamin shop and buying from them. So yeah, I think for now, I'm going to stick direct to consumer. But eventually, I, I do want to establish that uh, kind of credibility of, by going to a store. And Ilya, one of the uh things that I've learned about young entrepreneurs, and I'll speak just for myself. When I was a young entrepreneur, I attached my emotions to outcomes way too much. You know, like, oh, I'll be there when this happens. I'll be happy when this happens, when I make this yeah, much money. Yeah, it's story of my life. <laughs> yeah, so sure. it was for me when I was young. Yeah. Um, but especially when you have your first successful business, uh, the fear of attaching to a, an outcome, especially when people start asking you, you know, oh, so, you know, what, what's your plan of exit? And yeah. you're like, whoa, whoa, you know, <laughs> they almost force you into attaching your emotions to an outcome. Yeah. Uh, for you, how do you deal? I don't care about, because I know it's bullshit when people say, you know, what, what do you think you're going to exit? I always say it's all about, for me, shareholder value, meaning give me a fucking offer. Excuse my language. I rarely swear on this thing, but literally give me an offer and I'll tell you what my exit plan is. Yeah. <laughs> right. But so more importantly, yeah. I want to know how, uh, taking my own, because you and I share a similar mindset. You're just a lot younger, but you're like I was when I was your age. How do you deal with that emotional attachment? Because it's always omnipresent 
and always creating resistance and you know do you think about outcomes or are you dealing with that uh fear or stress right now yeah i think as of right now i'm, I'm more so thinking of goals for the business to achieve uh for example uh, a major goal of ours is to launch a workout app so i'm more so stressed about making that as perfect as possible and i know that if that's done right we play our cards correctly the big offer will come so i'm not necessarily thinking of like i know the number should be a billion dollars or 500 million <laughs> but sounds good yeah it sounds great to me yeah. but no i want to make the best product i can possibly make and i i firmly believe that someone will come along the way and see the work that we've put in and see the user base we have and see how good of a brand it is and make us a good offer. So. It's so funny. I asked Dave Portnoy, you know who that is from Barstool? Yeah. Early on, and I asked him a similar question. He's like, let me just tell you this. Somebody offered me $10 million. I'd play golf every day. I'm done. <laughs> that was his answer. Now I no, give him shit I, all the time. That's funny. I'm like, like 10 million, man. Look how much you make now. So we were actually talking about that on our podcast um, a few days ago. My buddy asked me the same thing. He's like, hey, how much would you take? And what would you do after? And I was like, good question. Here's the thing. I could be, I could make five hundred million dollars, and I don't think that anyone that's made that much money would ever stop because, like, you don't. Yeah, because to get to that point, like, you have to have something in you. Something wrong about you, yeah, dude. Yeah. I made over a hundred million dollars, and yeah. like, I didn't stop, right? Yeah, I just, you just never. You never do. have to work again. Yeah. And my wife was like, "Are you a freaking idiot? Like, you don't have to work." I'm like, "No, you don't understand. My yeah. personality that got me here it's is not the work. one that's the thing is, that, it's not it's work, activity right? I get paid for, yeah. man. Yeah, exactly." Yeah. That's so cool. Um, so you're a type of guy, you know, whether it's supplements, whether it's your own personal influence or whether it's building an app, you want to do it your way. You, you want to provide the value because you know what you and the audience that resonates with you wants. Yeah. And that community is only building uh, beyond those three things. Do you see another complimentary uh, project? that enhances what you're doing or that you're interested in? Absolutely. I mean, I have I have things that I'm running down all the time, whether it's like mentally in my head or on a notepad of ideas that I have. But I really want to do, um, I say futuristic. I think that's the wrong word, but like a futuristic gym. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is because I think it's, I'll tell you after, but super unique. Yeah. But I want to do a, a really upscale gym uh, Equinox mixed with like lifetime fitness, hundred thousand plus square feet. With all your stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be really, really. Well, sweet. you could join me. I'm thinking about making this into a gym, <laughs> oh, and yeah. and I'll need you to give me the curriculum. Right. We got stairs. Perfect. Yeah. Right. We got all yeah, kinds of different. We got field. There, yeah. Right. We could put in different equipment down there. Portable, of course. Right. Yeah. We'll get like Flex Lewis to hook us up with some dragon shit. Yeah. No. That'd be. That'd what do you sweet. think? And then we can use your app and your supplements. Sounds we can sell good. it in all these stores, <laughs> give us a retail present. Yeah. And we have plenty of room downstairs to warehouse this stuff so we can go direct to consumer right from SoFi. Done. And use this to advertise it. <laughs> Perfect. See, there shit just go. comes together. Yeah. Well, Ilya, thank it. you so much, man. Yeah. You are a champion amongst champions as you see up there on the scoreboard. Uh, absolutely, I'm sure I'll have you back because your playbook is just beginning and the success you have early and often is indicative of where you're going. Trust me, I've seen a lot of people like you and I only am excited to see your future. Thank you so much. This is Thank Dave you. Meltzer. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. With Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.